We recently tested the new Ethelson S1. It's loud as <laughs> All future FDM printers that can boast high speed will be loud, barring some new kind of technology, because filament, it needs cooling. Back in the day, motor noise was the most irritating thing, uh, until we had nice drivers with stealth chop. Do you remember A4988 drivers? <laughs> But now the problem is our cooling systems, and specifically our part cooling systems. The S1 is awesome, but we are pushing 83, 84 decibels with it, and I can't keep it in my office anymore. It lives in the workshop now. So it makes sense that we look for options to suppress the sound that we get from our part cooling systems, just make it quieter. But that's why there exist silent fans, and we have Noctua fans in the shop, which are quiet, whisper quiet. Can you hear that? There is just one tiny problem with silent fans, and that is they are just way too underpowered for any part cooling applications. These fans are really suitable for heat sinks, like on your hot end or on your motors. They're also useful for mainboard cooling or if you have a Raspberry Pi, but they're just not suited for part cooling and not even for the S1 pushing a thousand millimeters per second for pretty much every part cooling solution. The airflow on a FLX 4010 Noctua fan is about 6.6 .6 to 8.3 meters cube per hour. That's, that's, that's pretty low. And actually, you're probably going to have it at the low end because you're using the low noise adapter cable that comes with it. A 5015 fan can push a lot more than that, generally between 9 and 14 meters cube per hour. And that's better, but it's still not quite enough for a lot of modern printers, and they're becoming less popular because of this. And actually, these kind of fans and 4010 fans are normally mounted on the print head, but that's also becoming less popular to reduce the inertial mass on any moving parts. So a lot of the time we have fans that are actually quite large on the side or maybe on the x-axis profile with some Cartesian printers. The most extreme kind of part cooling solution we have is something called a CPAP fan. And we have one of these on the S1 and you can see them on a bunch of other printers as well. They're basically like a huge radial fan, but they push out an airflow of up to 25 meters cubed per hour. That's a lot more than an Octua fan. The Creality K1 Max has a similar fan mounted on the side, not quite as big or powerful as the S1, uh, but it is loud. So what we're going to do today is try and quieten that fan as much as possible. Emphasis on the try. One answer, well, besides just closing the door and putting the lid on, that's not really that good for PLA. Uh, one solution would be to basically cover the inside with some sort of sound insulation foam. I've tried that and it doesn't do much, barely anything in fact. And I don't really want to put foam on the inside of the printer. There's not that much space in there anyway. And while this is flame retardant, I'm a little bit scared that bits of foam will get everywhere. It's it's going to give us grief. Let's not do this. There are plenty of mufflers or silencers for fans that you can print yourself. This was the first that came up in printables. And a quick look will show that it is a series of fins or baffles that mitigate any airborne sound. And that is pretty much the design for all of these. They also tend to have their intake pointed away from the user. I did a quick YouTube search to see if anyone else has done a similar thing and provided more quantifiable research that I could understand. And I was lucky enough to find that Simon from vez 3 d has done a similar thing for his CPAP on his printers. The link is over here. You can check it out too, actually, because Simon is very talented. I took Simon's design, which is basically just an air box and a little tube which has perforations in it. And I kept the tube but I just made the airbox round so it would fit over the K1 fan. So the Creality K1 Max has a similar fan, though not as loud, but it's still pretty loud. Okay. So we got about 67 or 68 decibels in total. That is where we stand with the side fan. So for all future noise tests, I'm going to keep my phone here for accuracy. Okay, so now we're testing the redesign I did of, of Simon's baffle.
Oh yeah. Down to about 63 decibels. But I, I really don't like where it is going because I can I can hear that the fan is starting to struggle. Uh, let's test that. So I have an airspeed meter here. I'm going to test it to see what its full speed is without the baffle. So we're getting about 7.5 meters per second. Let's see what happens with the baffle. Whoa. 2.7, 2.9, 3. 3. Okay. That is a drop down to 3 meters per second. That is a little bit large. I don't think that's going to work. The problem we are having here, and it's exactly what Simon faced as well, and what Noctua faced as well, is that the best way to reduce the noise from a fan is to limit its performance. That's, that's not an option for us. Only very, very mild performance loss is something I can tolerate for this project. So we need to think a bit more about this. Simon says, can I just say Simon says? Simon, if you're watching, I'm sorry. You probably have had to deal with that joke before. Simon's design works basically the same way as a car muffler. So how the hell do they work? So apparently there are two ways car mufflers work. One is pretty much the same as Simon's design. It's like an air box with a tube with perforations that kind of direct and scatter sound to the outside where there is an absorbing material to basically just absorb the sound. This is pretty much the same as Simon's design minus the absorbing material. Uh, but pretty much all of the designs I found on printables, or most of them anyway, don't use this absorbing material at all. They just have fins and perforations and baffles to, to absorb and scatter the sound. So what if I try the redesign of, of Simon's one with some absorbing material? Let's, let's try that. Let's see what happens. OK, so now I'm testing it with some insulation material along the sides. Sixty-four to sixty-five. That's actually, there's not much of a difference really. Okay, time to test this properly because until now I've just been using a decibel meter to test this, but I really want to try a sound analyzer so I can see which frequencies are the highest and which are dampened the most. So I have a sound analyzer app here, which gives the, the overall decibel count, but it also gives the specific frequency loudness as well. I want to see if this will actually block a specific frequency or is it just overall? So let's try that. It's more or less average, but maybe the higher frequencies are blocked a bit by this. That's interesting. Okay, for the next test, I want to see what the peak frequency is of the fan without any mufflers. We're getting about one kilohertz from the fan. That's the peak frequency. I'm doing this because there is a second way that car mufflers work. So in addition to the perforated tube and absorbing material, some mufflers allow sound to come into a chamber and it hits off the wall at the back and bounces back. And if the walls are the right distance away, it should bounce back completely out of phase and destructively interfere with the incoming wave, therefore reducing the amplitude. So we need to do this for a one kilohertz frequency. So I, I studied physics in college. It was the first degree that I did. And in second year, we had a module called Waves and Vibrations. And there was a whole two people who went to that module, oh, me included, obviously. And the other guy and I had a deal. So he would go one week, and then I would go the next. And then we'd email each other the notes. 
I barely passed that class. And then I dropped out. <laughs> the issue with this method, if it is to work, uh, is that the length of the chamber depends on the wavelength of the sound and consequently the frequency. So there is a minimum length of a chamber that we have to create. This is also sort of how um, noise cancelling headphones work. They don't uh, reflect the sound, there's not enough space to do that there, but they have a microphone that uh, detects the sound and they create a corresponding sound that interferes and therefore noise is cancelled from the outside. I have a lot of printers working like right next to me constantly and they're pretty loud. I think I need something like that because normally I just have the music turned up really, really loud. So we're going to have to use the value of the peak loudness, which was around 1000 hertz. We divide the speed of sound in air by the frequency. And then you got the wavelength, which is 0.143 meters. And we divide that by two, and that is 0.07 meters. So the chamber needs to be 70 millimeters in length. And this is assuming that the plastic can reflect the sound instead of absorbing it. Can it? I don't know, but let's see what happens. Overall, we're down to about 63 decibels. 63, 64, maybe. And again, it's blocking most of the frequencies, but a bit higher as well. Okay, that dropped down to 63 or 64, but let's see how good the airflow is. That is 3.8 meters per second. Okay, so now we're trying the big resonance chamber. This has two chambers and it's, it's quite large and the holes are big as well, so the airflow should be better. Let's see what happens. Similar to last time, 63, 64, but I wonder what the airspeed is like. All right, that is 5.1, that is a lot better. Okay, now we're trying the really big one. This should be good. It has way bigger holes. Let's find out. Actually, that's pretty much the same. Now let's test the airflow. Six. That's a drop to six meters per second. That is much better than the previous 5.1. Okay, cool. When I was reading and researching about all this, I came across an article about a team from Boston University who 3D printed this kind of ring device that supposedly blocks 94% of sound and allows air to flow through normally. Uh, it's basically just a ring, but with like a helical pattern in there. Let's try that. And now we're gonna test the Boston University team design and it's pretty much just a five start thread. That's what I did and then surrounded it with rings. So I don't know, let's see what happens. Oh 
getting 65 to 66 decibels. So it's not as good in terms of noise, but let's check the airspeed. Wow. That is 7.5. That preserved pretty much all the airflow. That's, that's pretty impressive. I think maybe we need to use this in a similar manner to how the Boston University team used it because in their videos, it does show that it is at the end of a very long tube. So I think they also use like a resonance cavity as well, uh, in addition to their ring device. Um, so I printed uh, basically a similar thing, fits on the fan and then the, the Boston University device can go on here. Um, unfortunately, it's too big. <laughs> so we're gonna have to do that one again. However, I am really impressed with this design and also the resonant cavity designs as well. I think the biggest problem we have here is preserving airflow. We need to have an intake that is as large as possible so that all of the air can get into that fan. And we need to have multiple resonant chambers as well, I think. So let's work on that. One possible issue and maybe the problem we're having with all of these designs is that they're all basically designed to block sound from an intake. Uh, rather than block sound from the output of the fan. And I'm not sure if we can actually do anything about the output because we really need to preserve that airflow. This is supposed to be able to preserve airflow, um, but I haven't had much luck using it on the output of the fan. It doesn't seem to do much actually. Um, yeah, I don't want to give up on this. It's really cool, but I think we can only use these designs for the intake. One last thing has been overlooked, and we've been talking basically about sound moving through air as a medium, but that's not the whole story. So the K1 and the K1 Max, that fan is mounted to an acrylic panel. And if you have one of these printers and the fan is on, you put your hand on the panel, you can feel it vibrating. This is where I think I can make a noticeable difference. There exists vibration damping tape that you can get. 3M actually make one. However, these are ridiculously expensive. Holy moly. Luckily, I have an alternative for this. This is gecko tape. It's it's a great tape. It's my favorite tape. I didn't know I had a favorite tape until I got gecko tape. And you can get this for a few euro online. So what makes this different from other tapes is that it's a very like gooey, squidgy consistency. It's quite thick. It's a double sided tape. And you just put it on, take off the outside plastic and put anything on because it is really, really strong. It's also reusable, so you can just take it off, clean it with some water and use it somewhere else. It's, it's an awesome tape. Because it's so gooey, I think it might just work in this case. Okay, let's see what the peak frequency is here. It's just about 60 decibels overall. and 800 hertz. So it's a bit lower than what we got from the front of the machine, which is expected because the acrylic plate is vibrating at a lower frequency. So this is a 10 millimeter thick aluminum plate, and I'm gonna be putting the gecko tape on this and then placing this on the panel. Okay, so before we had 800 Hertz, which was the peak frequency. That is no, now considerably lower. Peak frequency is now 1.6 kilohertz, so twice that. And the overall decibel reading, 56 or 57. So between two and three decibels less than when we didn't have this plate and the gecko tape. That's really interesting. This is stupidly simple, but very, very effective. And I think this would make a great intermediary or, or gasket for printer feet. So we'd have this between the printer and the feet, and hopefully that should uh, absorb any vibrations that we might encounter. I think the main issue we have here is that we can only insulate the intake for part cooling fans. Anything else will just deprive it of performance. And I don't really know what's gonna happen in the future, but if 
printers keep getting faster and we don't have some solution to this, printers are just going to get loud. Like every new printer that you will get will be really loud. And I can't do that at home. I can't have the S1 in, in my house. All of my printers are in a cupboard uh, and when they're running and the door is closed, yeah, you notice them. Maybe we'll be able to overcome this somehow. Maybe we'll have new filament that doesn't require cooling at all, or maybe we'll have another method for cooling. But in the near future, I don't see fans going away and I don't see high speed printing going away. If you're interested in these designs, we have included them on our printables and Thingiverse page. Uh, we will be tweaking the Boston University slash resonant chamber design. So by the time this video is up, you will be able to find that on our printables slash Thingiverse pages. So you can download them and see if they work. It would be awesome if you guys gave us your opinion on the designs that we did today. And if you have a different technique that we completely overlooked, then please mention that too. You can write us down in the comments. You can send us an email. You can also join us on our Discord server where there is talk on a daily basis. The link is down below, of course, and we'll see you guys next time. Later.